You are listening to audio from the Decidedly Podcast. This episode is a highlight clip from this week's full episode. To listen in on the complete conversation, see the show notes for the link to the complete show. You can help us out by leaving us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. We appreciate every bit of your support. I'm Morgan McKittrick, your producer, and this is Decidedly. I think that, you know, part of the reason why obviously people, children get taught to lack in some emotional self-awareness is because that most parents lack in emotional self-awareness. And, you know, I remember having, uh, being young, I had a problem dealing with anger specifically as an emotion. I would, you know, have certain outbursts or fight with other kids or, you know, raise my mm-hmm. voice or I'd, I'd get really angry and, and I would do things that were a problem. And the response, this isn't, you know, I'm not dogging on my parents. I'm saying this good. is That's generally, <laughs> generally everybody told me um, how to deal with it and how they suggested that I deal with it was always at the end of the road, right? It It was about don't do the thing that caused the problem. Don't throw the thing. Don't raise your voice. Don't say the cuss word. Don't insult your friend when they steal your ball or whatever it is. It was always at the end of the the chain of events. It was never even acknowledged that you're angry. And, and so I interpreted that as a kid as like, don't be angry. And sometimes pe- mm-hmm. that's what adults would tell me is don't be angry over that. Well, I am. And I'm angry because yeah. he did this. And it, da, 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 da. like I had a righteous anger. And, well, I mean, and, that's that's sort of, you know, well, right. I mean, you, you want to uh, not don't be angry part, but looking at moderate the behavior. In other words, no, it's OK to be angry, but, but don't throw the rock. I think you know? that's that's so stupid. To, a kid is not going to understand like. Oh, don't throw the, I'm, the problem is that I allowed myself to get so mad that that was, that seemed right to me in the moment. Like, I don't think that you can get there. You have to moderate how you deal with the emotion before you get to the point where you're punching someone in the face. If you're so mad and you're allowing those thoughts to race and you're allowing those feelings to get out of control to the point where you are about to punch someone in the face, then Mm-hmm. then you have a problem that needs to be addressed before you get to the point. You can't cock your fist back and then expect your, you know, irrationally angry brain to hold that fist back and put it back down. And that's the problem right. that would drive me crazy is people would say like, Oh, well count to 10. And it was always weak. Like it was yeah. always people that weren't <laughs> like, I could just tell they were never angry. <laughs> like, it was like, I don't yes. believe and believe you. Cause you don't seem like you could get mad about anything. Oh, don't do this. Yeah. Don't, don't scream. Don't yell. Don't hit whatever. And I'm a little kid going, well, I'm not going to sit there and think about counting to 10 when I'm that mad. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I guess right. my question for you is how do you, how do you blend these approaches and say, well, yeah, the behavior might be a problem, but the thoughts and the feelings need to be addressed before the behavior even becomes an option. Yeah. And I think that's such a beautiful example because that's classic even in adults, right? And the key is that earlier moment. So by the time your fist is cocked, you have gotten to the point where, you know, we can even look at this chemically, your sympathetic nervous system is on high alert. You are in fight or flight right then. You are so escalated that you feel like the only choice is to go on autopilot. And typically, you know, again, I'm, I always have to sort of chuckle to myself when people are told or people tell kids, you know, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And it's like, okay, can you tell the kid what they are supposed to do instead? And yeah. in your case, you maybe got the count to 10 and said, but that's pretty weak, let, yes. let's say, you know. So what it would involve <laughs> in that case, and maybe counting to 10 and pausing has a moment, but if it's actually more nuanced, as in, as you're counting to 10, here's what you should be visualizing. Here's what you should be noticing. You know, I've worked with so many people where with the anger, it's about noticing it just earlier in the process. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Yeah. It has to be noticing it earlier. My heart is going, my my 
fists are getting clenched, my jaw is getting tight, my chest is getting hot, and it's escalating, escalating, escalating. When you work with somebody on this stuff, they can start to notice it earlier in the process and therefore counteract it. Okay, in this moment right here, I'm not going to do the simplistic count to 10, but I'm going to roll my head from side to side, or I'm going to walk away and visualize something that I've come up with that's very safe for me, or I'm going to do some diaphragmatic breathing where I it really, really inhale. And we say diaphragmatic breathing because your diaphragm inside your abdomen is getting full yeah. and your belly breathing, you know, people call it, or I'm going to have something that I visualize that actually makes me laugh. Or I'm going to, sometimes with adults, you can say, ha picture yourself being loved, picture yourself having compassionate thoughts, which is sort of short circuits, some of that fight or flight system, or even more purely physical. You know, if you're in on a playground, you know, why not teach a kid like, okay, if you feel that heart start going, why don't you go and do, you know, this little dance or this little exercise. Some kids, you can teach them to sort of beat their hands against their chest like a gorilla. <laughs> and it's so silly yeah, yeah. that it kind of diffuses the situation. It also gets out energy. You know, some people can have sort of a silly thing that they might say that gets out their energy. So they want to scream. You know, somebody wants to scream at their kids, but they have a certain phrase that they scream in instead that's kind of a loving, funny phrase. There's, you know, it really has to depend on what feels right for the person. But what all of those approaches have in common is that you're intervening sooner. You're not telling somebody that's gotten to the point of having the clenched fist that's about to connect with somebody's face. You're not telling them, oh, at that moment, you yeah, should count to 10. Past the age of like two, you know not to hit. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're still or exactly. you know not to scream, you know not to yell, yes. you know not to break things. So yes. if you're doing that yes. at four, five, six, seven, it's like you already know you shouldn't be yes. doing that. Um, right. It's it, and, and but we keep addressing that behavior all the way to adulthood. Right. All the yeah. way. You know, a uh, judge says, well, you know, uh, we're going to have to send you to the county jail for 180 days because you hit that guy at the bar. That's the bad mm -hmm. part. The bad parts yep. you hit the guy at the bar. No, no, man. The bad parts that you let the fact that he bumped into you piss you off so much yes. that you were willing to yes. fight somebody and risk your own health and safety and freedom for what pride? Wow, that's yep. a, wow. Well, I can deal with that a little bit more. And and when I understand, oh, maybe I'm a little bit more prideful than I need to be. Maybe I'm I'm yes. walking on edge. Maybe I'm going through life with a chip on my shoulder, and, and, and I'm angry about it. And there's this underlying sense of anger that's with me all the time. So that when I do get bumped yeah. into at the bar, I'm already at ten because my baseline's a seven, <laughs> right? How do I lower exactly. my baseline? And nobody is talking yes. to people like that, or very few people yeah. have that have an adult in their life who talks to them about their emotions. Not only anger, all emotions. You know, maybe it's sadness. Maybe you're walking through life with a baseline seven mm -hmm. out of ten sadness. Well, uh, you've got to address that. In my experience, it was any time I ever did anything that caused me to get in trouble at school or at home, it was usually the the problem is the behavior and the focus of our conversation is going to be on the behavior. And it was mm -hmm. rare that the focus would even be on the emotions of that moment. Right. And if it was, the f if we did talk in the conversation about the emotions of the moment, usually it was don't feel that way, <laughs> especially when it came to anger, mm -hmm. you know, don't be angry. It wasn't, yeah. hey man, why do you think that that was something that made you that upset? Exactly. And that's what we've got to change. And there were so many interesting points there because I do think depression in men often comes out as anger and irritability. Fear and anxiety often come out as anger and irritability because really what we're talking about is folks who are walking around highly sensitive to threat. So, you know, one little trigger and bam, it's off to the races. I am agitated. We see this with people who've suffered trauma. We see this with people who are underslept. There are so many things that can make you more highly sensitized to threat. And unfortunately, in modern culture, <laughs> a lot of us are just getting more fearful, more agitated. We're not getting enough sleep. There's all kinds of science about what's happening in our environments and in our gut bacteria that might make us a little bit more anxious, even physiologically. There's more trauma. I mean, some of the latest data even out this week about how many teenage girls have been victims of violence. It's so disheartening. And I think what we're really seeing is that there are a lot of people that are walking around just a hair away from exploding.
Thanks for making the great decision to listen in to this week's episode highlight. If you want more of what you just heard, see the show notes for the full episode. As always, for the latest decision-making tips, find us on decidedlypodcast.com or on Instagram at decidedlypodcast. And be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter from the link in the show notes. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review as well. We read all of your comments, so if you learned some decision-making tips today, let us know. Until next time, this is Decidedly. Insights, advice, and comments provided by Sean Smith, Sanger Smith, and speakers identified as part of the Decidedly podcast should not be considered recommendations. Speakers not identified as members of Decidedly are expressing their opinion, and their statements should not be construed as reflecting the views of the Decidedly team. This podcast is produced solely for informational purposes, not personalized advice.